My name is Aurélien Mazoyer. I work for France Labs, which is a small company based in France. What we do, we do consulting on um, search technologies such as Lysine, Solar, or Elasticsearch. And uh, we also offer consulting service on uh, technologies that are part of the search ecosystem, uh, for instance, Manifold CF. Um, we are also software maker, and uh, indeed we developed um, our intranet search solution, which is called Datafari. Uh, I'll say a few words about it at the end of my talk. Uh, today's topic is the way to integrate Manifold CF with Sora. And uh, before I start, uh, just a quick survey. Uh, how many of you have ever used Manifold CF? Okay, so it will be something new for many of you. Here is the agenda. Uh, well, my talk will be divided into three main parts. Uh, first part will be an overview of Manifold CF. Then uh, I'll explain uh, a scenario. Uh, it's a case study on the integration of Manifold CF with Solar in order to search file uh, on a file share and with security concern. And then we'll see what happens with Manifold in real life. Okay, uh, in a nutshell, um, Manifold CF. CF stands for Connector Framework. That means that is a tool, that Manifold is a tool that helps you to connect to many heterogeneous systems, to retrieve data from uh, these systems, and then to push it to your favorite search engine. And then the idea is to try to keep it synchronized. Uh, Manifold CF is also able to take access rights into account in order to be able to perform authenticated search. Uh, you have also a complete user interface and a REST API. So, uh, in a few words, um, Carl Wright uh, started the development of uh, this tool when he worked for MetaCarta. Many, it was then given to the Apache Software Foundation, and it's a top-level project in 2012. Um, it's an active project. As you can see, the last version of Manifold was released last summer. Um, in Manifold, you have plenty of connectors uh, that are included in the distribution, but you can also write your own connector um, uh, you have connector in order to uh, fetch data from repositories. Uh, these connectors are, are called content repositories connector. You can crawl web, you can crawl wiki, database, email, but you can also interact with system from the proprietary world, such as SharePoint or Dropbox you are also able to interact with uh, domain controllers such as Active Directory. And of course, you have connector to your search engine. You can push it to Solar, Elasticsearch, and many others. Here's a big picture. We have, what you can see here is that we have many components. We have components that uh, the first component is the user interface. We have also the component for the API. We have what is called the authority service. We'll say a few words about it uh, in a few slides. And uh, the main component is the daemon agent. What we cannot see here is the underlying database, which is really the backbone of this solution. So I will start, I start with the daemon agent. Um, it's a Java process that 
runs uh, different uh, connectors, repository and output connectors, and that is a component that will actually do the crawling job. Uh, as I told you, there is also the authority service, which is a web application and that runs authority connectors. Um, the role of this component is to get the security tokens for a specific user. For example, uh, if the authority connector is, if the authority service is connected to an active directory, uh, you will be able to get, for a specific user, you will be able to get the SID of this user and the SIDs of all groups that it belongs to. Here is the user interface. You can see here is a screenshot of the user interface. It's also, you can see a web application. It's used to administrate manifolds you have. And uh, if you want to use manifold, you can configure what you want here in the user interface. You can start, um, you can create an output connector and uh, create a repository connector and then you will link the, these two connectors with what is called a job. Once you are done, you are now able to start your crawl. Of course, what you can do in the user interface, you can also do it in the API, uh, which is uh, which respect the uh, REST standards. Uh, in the API, you can put new configuration for your output connection. You can create new job, and you can also send commands if you want to start a job, and and so on. It's very simple if you want to test it. You just have to extract binary distribution, open the example folder, and run this command. I think it's not uh, too unfamiliar to solar users. Um, but in fact, it's not the recommended way to run it in production mode, mainly because of the embedded the, um, database. Uh, if you want to um, take manifold CF to production, you'll probably uh, use a multiprocess deployment. In a multiprocess deployment, each component that we've just seen will be deployed to uh, will be deployed separately. So we have three web application that we can deploy in a servlet container. For, ex for example, we can deploy it on Tomcat. You have the daemon agent that you can run in a separate, separate process. And you have the database. And one of the recommended database for Manifold is Postgre. Uh, all these processes will synchronize themselves on the local file system, or it can also synchronize uh, with the help of Zookeeper. Okay, here is our scenario. Let's imagine um, that you have an intranet, you have users who authenticate against an active directory, and um, they put their files on a shared folder and uh, some there are, you have access rights on folder based on the user's role and the user's group, but you have also specific permission for, for example, VIP user. And of course, it's a mess, uh, so you need a good search engine to find the documents. This is a quite simple scenario, but it's not very unusual, and it can really be a nightmare if you don't have the right tool to deal with it. As you can see here, we are in a full proprietary environment, but as we will see, Manifold CF and Solar can deal with it. Okay, uh, a few words about the security model. The authorization, here we are doing early binding. That means that we will index the access control list of document, and then we will compute the authorization at runtime when the user runs a query. 
the authentication is not um, is not the job of Solar or, or Manifold, and it's up to the front-end application to authenticate your user. If we go back to the big picture, here is a step one, uh, indexing. You have the GCIFS connector that fetches document with their access control list and push the document to Solar. So that's the indexing phase, the search step. The front end sends an authenticated query. Uh, then Solar retrieves the security tokens linked to the current user. Then it runs normal search and is now able to filter the result set with the help of the document access control list and the user security tokens. Okay, how can we actually implement uh, that behavior? Uh, on the MCM, MCF side, you have to create a Windows share connection. Uh, you, you have, it's quite simple. And you have to create a solar connection, you have to create an active directory connection, an authority group, and a calling job. Um, each authority connector should belong to an authority group, so that's why you need an authority group. So that's it for Manifold TF. As I told you, the authentication is in, uh, the front end in fact is in charge of the authentication of the user. So for example, if you use Tomcat, you have uh, GDNI realm to do that in order to um, send LDAP query. And you can also use Tomcat's Penago if you want to do single sign-on. On the Solar side, you have two things to do. First, you have to modify the schema. You have to add some fields to index access control list of the document. And you have to modify the solar config and uh, in order to declare your <coughs> manifold CF plugin, you have to set the endpoint of your authority service. And then you have to um, add a filter query that will use uh, your plugin in your current search handler. This is for the search handler. For the update handler, well, it's a default extracting handler that, as you may know, that integrates Apache Tika uh, that can do content extraction. And uh, as a reminder, as a reminder uh, since Solar 5, um, Tika embeds um, Tesseract, so that you can do uh, image, you can extract content from images. Uh, Solar can do this job, but you can do this job directly in Manifold CF. Uh, in Manifold CF, you have what is called transformation connection, which is in fact a processing pipeline. Uh, we, what we can do here, you can do film mapping, but also TK extraction. And uh, it's perfect if you don't want to send big files over the network, you can extract the content you need directly in Manifold and, the, and then send it to Solar. Okay, now we'll try to understand what's going on under the hood when we, when we were doing a crawl. In Manifold, there are two, there are Manifold under, can uh, use these two models, two crawling models, incremental model and continuous model. The idea of incremental model is to avoid uh, indexing two times the same content. And uh, okay, so you have two steps. The first step is the uh, fetching, document fetching, indexing. And the second step is the deletion of unreachable document. Some repository work very well with incremental calling, but others don't. 
Um, for example, our Windows share won't be able to answer to this uh, query. So how can we, how our GCIFS connector will be able to do incremental calling? First, for each start part entry, it will fetch the file attributes from the, uh, from the external system. Uh, then, if it's a folder, it will do a typical depth first crawl. If it's, um, it's, if it's a regular file, what it will do, it will check its ingest status entry in the crawler database. If there is no ingest status entry, that means that it's a new document, so you have to fetch it. If, but if the version attribute is different, uh, that means that the document has been updated and you also have to fetch the new version. So what is the ingest status database entry? Uh, in simplified version, in fact, for each document you have uh, the URI with the last ingestion date and the last version. What is the last version? It really depends on the repository that you want to crawl. For, uh, for file share, it's based on the last modified attribute and the ATL on the file. Then, Step two, deletion of unreachable documents. Okay, now it's in production mode and you want to be sure that everything goes well. You have many information in the user interface. You can uh, have the job status. You have what is called notification connection that can send you an email. For example, if something, uh, if, if something goes wrong or Simply, the crawl uh, has finished. You have many information also in the history, in the simple, uh, in the history. For example, you, the history will log each uh, activity that uh, happens in Manifold. Uh, for example, it can be uh, document fetching and uh, you have also the document status. The document status help you if you want to see, for example, if a document has already been ingested in the current crawl. And uh, what you have, you have maximum bandwidth that will give you the information of, that will give you some information on the crawling performance. Okay, and so if you are facing some performance issues, um, obviously you have to find the bottleneck. Sometimes the bottleneck comes from the crawled repository. Um, for example, the crawled repository is overloaded. It can also be because of the network, so you should monitor your network uh, with the help of Wireshark. And it can also be because of the, your solar server. For example, uh, if the auto commit frequency is too high in your configuration. As I told you, manifold CF, the manifold CF database is really an important uh, component in the tool. So you have to be sure that you follow the best practices. Uh, that you can find in the end user documentation of manifold CF. And it can also be because of the, the configuration is done uh, on the, your connectors. Well, okay, so for example, you have two parameters that can have an impact of your, of, on the performance. You have the throttling, which is in fact uh, the fixing an hard limit on the number of documents that you want your crawler, that, that you will fetch uh, during a time period, for, and uh, 
uh, you have also the max GVM connection. That will be, in fact, the, the number of connections that the crawler will use to um, connect to the external system. Uh, you can, all this value will can, improve, can have an impact on the performance. For example, if you are doing web crawling, you should increase this value. And, but uh, if you are using Windows Share, Windows Share won't work very well with a lot of connections. So in our, in our scenario, we should use a small value. And uh, so as you can see, this value is very specific to the repositories that you want to crawl. You have in the job settings, you can also filter the documents that you want to index. And uh, so you can fix a size limit for the document you want to fetch. And you can also specify some regular expression in order to remove some extension from call. Uh, for example, for an intranet search, uh, you probably don't want to index uh, the last Star Wars movie that an employee wanted to share with their colleagues. OK, uh, that's for performance issues. Uh, you can, sometimes you can uh, be facing some errors during crawl. So what you will do to investigate error, what you will do, you will uh, have a look, of course, uh, on the log. You can increase the connector load, log level in order to have more information. As we seen, uh, you can also, you will have also useful information in the search history. And um, if it's not enough, you can also do a thread dump that will probably give you information on uh, what went wrong. One, there are many problems that can happen when you want to crawl file share. And one common problem is when the account that you use for crawling doesn't have enough permissions. And um, you must have an account that can read all the files that you want to crawl, but also that can read all the access control list on this file. Uh, of course, if you have an administrator account, it will be OK, but usually uh, um, the, you won't have an administrator account, so you probably have to uh, ask for an account with special rights, for example, a print operator right on Active Directory. Uh, you can also have problems if you try to index exotic file, files. Uh, for that, you, don't, you, you should don't forget to um, add the Ignortica exception in Solar. And as we just seen before, uh, you can limit this is the size and use regular expression to, um, to avoid crawling some um, kind of files. You can also have GCIFS errors. So that can be linked to network issues or not. And uh, sometimes it helps to increase the GCIFS timeout. And sometimes you uh, can all also have solar connection timeout uh, on manifold side. For example, if you are doing complex processing in solar, if you are doing uh, OCR on your documents, for example, and you probably have to increase the solar connector timeout in manifold. Okay, we've covered, of, uh, we, we've seen what can happen in real life when you use manifold for a concrete scenario. Um, if I want to conclude in one slide, uh, when manifold CF is the right tool for you, I will say if you are 
uh, in an intranet scenario with many heterogeneous systems and with security, for, security concerns, then go for it. Here are some references. So of course you have the manifold CF documentation, uh, the end user documentation. You, have, you, you can also read the manifold CF in action. Uh, the, this is the ebook written by Carl Wright and uh, it's now freely available. You can also have a look to our blog post uh, if you want to run through the different steps that we covered during the talk. And if you are too lazy to integrate solar with Manifold by yourself, what you can do is to download Datafari, which is our intranet ready-to-play search solution. And Datafari will, embed, in fact, embed solar and Manifold CF for you with other cool stuff on top of that. You have an admin uh, interface, you have a responsive search UI, you have a user management, you have um, user behavior analysis with the help of Banana. And well, we are really proud of it at France Lab, so if you don't hesitate to download it, to test it, and to send us your feedback, and why not if you want to contribute to it, Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, if you have some questions, I will be really pleased to answer them.